Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, John here again. So, um, these records I'm going to show this time are rock. Um, quite a sort of mixed bunch of, of rock records. Um, I've recently shown my prog records. Um, there's no prog really in these as such. Um, so, uh, yeah, while I'm doing this, I'm listening to Steve Miller Band. And I picked up some uh, Steve Miller Band uh, records um, recently and uh, quite enjoying them. Uh, I listened to um, Fly Like an Eagle for the first time in many years, just, uh, just the other day, and really enjoyed it. And I thought, well, you forget just how good that record is. But the first record I'm going to show you today this is just an EP. Um, it's the Sugar Cubes. Um, it's the first single they released from their final album. Um, I saw them in concert in uh, Portsmouth Guildhall uh, on this particular tour. I think this is pretty much about the only sort of chart hit that they ever had, really. Um, it's ironic that it should be <laughs> from the last album that they they released before they stopped releasing albums and before they split up. Um, yeah, Sugar Cubes, you'll know that. Björk comes from here. So, um, this record, this is Champion. Um, it's one of those ones that says property of CBS demonstration only, not for sale. See that? So, Champion, who are they? Well, it's a little bit of an obscure record, I suppose, um, at least this day and age, anyway. Um, so you had um, Uriah Heep and the singer, David Byron, um, left or got kicked out of the band um, in the mid-70s, and uh, he quickly formed another band. Now, he formed a band called Rough Diamond. Uh, gathered a few sort of people that he knew around him uh, and formed this band Rough Diamond um, and he quickly left it they only made one album and he left but the band that he formed um, continued to uh, work together and employed another singer and they called themselves Champion and they released this album Champion um, the main person that I know on here is um, Clem Clemson who um, before this, he played in the uh, Coliseum and also um, Humble Pie. He went on to replace um, Peter Frampton uh, in Humble Pie when, when Peter Frampton left. Sue Clem Clemson was. So, yeah, it's quite a, quite a fun uh, record to have. Kind of fairly typical classic rock. Uh, I'm going to do a needle drop of this so you can see how they sound. Stars and Bars. Um, I think it's about his eighth studio album. Um, yeah, in the sleeve. It's just on uh, Reprise Records. I don't have an awful lot of uh, Neil Young. I think I've got about his first four or five albums, I suppose. Um, 
so very happy to have this. This was one of those ones, I bought this out of the, the Oxfam shop, £1.99. Um, it's one that had been marked down by this person, whoever they've got in there now, doing me a lot of favours really. Um, he's, you know, he, he's sort of marking down records to the minimum price. Uh, if, for instance, the cover is, isn't perfect, and I think it's the inner sleeve here, it's got a little bit of water damage there, but the record's perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, on the price on the price note, he says, sort of apologetically, uh, in this condition, one pound ninety nine, uh, meaning that they can't sell it for more than that because it's not, I don't know, for whatever reason, completely whole. But uh, hey, who am I to argue? So this next record is a bit of a an unusual one. It's going to take a little bit of explaining, I think, this one. Um, so the band is um, Velvet Monkeys, and this is their final album called Rake. Now, it, this this confused me a bit when I got it. Um, I mean, from the look of the cover, it looks like a you know a typical sort of 1980s MTV uh, sort of rock band like your Bon Jovi type thing. You've got your you got your chicks flashing the cleavage here. You got the guy in his uh, cowboy boots and his long leather coat, um, his shirt undone, a bit of a mullet and sunglasses going on there too. And you'd be mis you know, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is going to be sort of a, you know, a kind of a glam rock type thing. Uh, but it's really not. Um, it surprised me when I put it on. Um, this uh, straight away, it, it sounds like. I'd say it's probably got more more similarity to um, uh, what was that band, the eighties goth band, Jesus and Mary Chain. <laughs> it sounds more like Jesus and Mary Chain than it does uh, Bon Jovi. Um, or I'd probably say it's, it sounds like what Jesus and Mary Chain would sound like if they were going to be playing Motley Crue songs. <coughs> um, yeah, it, it's, there's a bit of a history to this record. So apparently this guy, Don Fleming. So apparently Don Fleming is a name in the sort of the grunge world. I know nothing about grunge. I really, I didn't enjoy that that sort of period of time in rock music. I don't really, don't really appreciate it. But anyway, this guy Don Fleming is apparently a big name in the grunge scene. Um, this is one of his bands. And it's supposed to be sort of like a, a spoof um, film score or soundtrack to a, a film that doesn't exist. Um, yeah, it, it's a bit of an unusual record. This uh, I'm going to hang on to it because it's because it is a little bit unusual. Um, I might come to appreciate it more in the future. It, <laughs> talking about this now, it reminds me of a time I saw. I don't know his name. Guy uh, that has the VG channel called um, Hogs Ear Report or something. He he sort of spoke about a record by Neil from the Young Ones, and it was kind of apparent from what he was saying about it that he hadn't understood that it was like a parody record. It wasn't really a proper. Uh, it wasn't sort of like an album released by an, an artist as such. It was a, a parody record. Um, and I'm feeling a bit like this. I'm wondering, you know, is, is there something that I don't know about this it's going completely over my head? Um, I don't know. Unusual one. Listen, see what you think.
the next record I'm showing is uh, CD Dan, Countdown to Ecstasy. Um, this is one of those records that came to me um, from the same guy that, that uh, had the uh, singles, the uh, 45s that I've been playing, the uh, soul singles. It's just on um, MCA Records. Uh, Stevie Dan, yeah, still trying to wrap my head around them. I've got uh, a few of their records, and although I like jazz, um, yeah, I'm still, you know, learning to tread the path that, uh, that these have left behind them. So uh, yeah, good to have. Great, certainly one good one for the collection. Stone the Crows. I picked this up at a car boot sale. Paid three pounds. Um, it's sort of like a, a blues rock band. Actually, that's you got that. Actually, yeah. um, from where Maggie Bell came from. Um, Maggie Bell. Um, it's sort of a, a sort of a bluesy sort of female vocalist in uh, not not so far from the sort of the style of um, Janis Joplin, for instance. I'm going to do a needle drop of this. You see what you think of this. The Maggie Bell. I picked up a record by her last year, and um, didn't know who she was. All I did know was that uh, her first solo album was released on. Um, the Swan Song label, and that Jimmy Page had some sort of interest. I think, yeah. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, these these are managed or were managed by Peter Grant, uh, who was the, the manager of Led Zeppelin. So that's another neat, uh, quite a good record to have found. Happy to have that. <laughs>
Carbut Sour. Um, really, really mellow. And it's what's sort of put me in the Steve Miller band frame of mind um, recently. Quite enjoying it. It's quite an early one uh, of his, and uh, it's great. If, if 1970 this came out, so yeah, if you if you know what Steve Miller's sort of earlier work is like, you know, you know, it, it's really nice and sort of laid back and mellow, um, kind of calming. I quite enjoy it. I really do. And uh, his latter stuff perhaps is a little bit more catchy, a bit more poppy, but uh, it's all really good stuff. And we have not much more to say. Now I'm going to show this one because I got this one as well recently. Uh, it looks pretty much new. It's still got the shrink on it, but it's yeah, it's not new. Um, this also came for me from the guy with the Northern Soul singles. Um, yeah, I haven't really a circle of love. I haven't really had a chance to listen to this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Hoping it's going to be as good as uh, you know his other work. It's good reviews anyway. I know that. So the last record I'm going to show now uh, this morning is this. This is Flintlock. The album called Tears and Cheers. It's their third album, I believe. It's, it's interesting, you think that there's sort of a, an element of punk in what they do, and there, there is a slight, slight punk feeling maybe in the vocals, like the guy that sings, his sort of vocal style, but otherwise it's a, it feels as well like there's the glam rock in there, um, even though sort of glam rock had, by this time it's sort of faded out uh, quite a bit and been replaced by punk. Um, this band feels a bit like they're, they're sort of bit basically being directed uh, to be a, a glam style band but there's a bit of punk in there, there's sort of resistance to that sort of thing. Can't really explain. Um, yeah, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or not. I don't know. I, I, I must admit I don't really enjoy listening to it because it, it kind of confuses me. It's, it's got this sort of it's not even fusion, it's just got this sort of confused feeling about it. Um, well, I'll, I'll do a needle drop of this and see what you think. Thanks very much. Bye.